I am sure sports. You know me there, yeah. I'm coach to coach representing. I'm gonna say this is right as representing for Omar. You don't know, come get the sports over here from near and far. Boy, 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 boy. Me say, I am sure sports, one thing me sure about When me say sure, that me, me not doubt Come get your sports, get it over here Come subscribe, repost and share I am sure sports, one thing me sure about When me say sure, that me, me not doubt Come get your sports, get it over here Come subscribe, repost and share yeah, If me not sure, that me, me not say it No who score, that me, me not say it Never know the game play, that me, me not say it If me never seen a game, me not know who play For your sports news, better come over your son For your soccer news, then come over your son If you don't love sports, still come over your son for the day, don't you want to love over your son? So, so, when it comes on to behavior concerning football, Jamaica is, is decent. I am sure that if we can get all of these things done, set in place by the end of April, it gives us enough time before the World Cup campaign. Not afraid of no Brazil or Argentina with these crapper players. We are good enough. Remember to like, subscribe, 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 share. Listen, comment, let me know what your thoughts are. Jerk Marinade gives your meats and vegetables authentic Jamaican jerk flavor. The spices are directly from Jamaica. Spices like jerk seasoning, allspice, scotch bonnet pepper, fresh scallions, thyme, ginger, and garlic. The key ingredients to a great jerk marinade. 0% sugar and low in sodium. You want to try it? Team Jamaican Herbs and Spices. Add delicious, bold flavor to your next grilling experience. Flavoring sauce, a marinade, basting, condiment, or topping. Trick Nick Jerk Barbecue Sauce. All right, welcome to I Am Sure Sports. I am your host, Manning's Man. Hope you're having a wonderful, 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 wonderful day. And we have a wonderful show lined up for you today we have one more legend that we will be talking to he'll be sharing his story with us if you are from uh trenchstone in the boystone area you would know this man very well if you don't know him you must have heard about him right um big time footballer and so he's going to to tell his story with us what it was like playing in his days very fascinating as I've listened to him in terms of some of the stuff that you hear. And um, I don't think it, it will be any less exciting um, when you compare it to some of the other legends, legends that we have heard from. So um, I won't take up much of his time because I know he has a lot to say. So I'm going to invite, um, you, you, you know him as Joe Downer, but um, his name is actually Donovan Downer. And so let me invite him to come on stream. And then you just jump into the comment section and then you come on and you tell us, um, you know, and ask all the questions you want. We want to get him to speak first. And then after that, we will have you call in. We'll have you make your comments and come in. Right. Also, I want, I want to say a big thank you to our sponsors, Trick Nick. Right. Um, you can visit them at www.tricknick.ca. They are a Jamaican owned company that operates in Canada and they sell everything you need for your jerky needs, right? Spices, they sell this jerk seasoning, jerk sauce, jerk paste, curry powder, hot pepper sauce, and here's what. Everything that they use to make their products, they get it directly from Jamaica. So please, 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 please check them out. And if you use this code, I am sure sports 001, you get 25% discount on all their products. And they ship right across the world with a minimal, minimal, minimal shipping fee. So check out Trick Nick Catering. Thank you, Military Guna TV, for coming in um, and joining the stream early. And let me just introduce our guest now. Here you go, Mr. Downer. Oh, How yeah. you doing? I see you have on the famous red and white representing the Red Brigade, right? <laughs> um, any other color, the people down Trench Town and Riemann, those places would not be happy. So it's represent. Good to see you 
represent <laughs> always in, always color come red on. you know before before you even go to come on shout out all the streets and the lane and all the people you don't have to call any about call us some of the places all the lane you know, fifth street fourth street whatever street and just big up the people before we even get into the formal uh yeah man well, um, big up and bless up all the people them from kingston 12 Trenchtown, Rima community, from Columbus Road all the way up to 7th Street, all the way up to Arnett Gyan, come all the way around to Lockley City, Action Park, Buckers, Rima Scheme, my place them there. All right. All right, <laughs> boss. Some people are wondering, where, 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 where is that? That's in Jamaica, they don't know. But who yeah, know? That is oh. Kingston, Jamaica, man. They are the city. And who know, no? And who know, no, no, no? <laughs> <laughs> All right, but so good having you um, today. We have, you know, I've had the privilege of in the last few days um, to be talking to you as well and having some very interesting conversation as we talk about just football in Jamaica now and what it was back in the day. And so what I want to do today as we start is to have you just tell us where it all started for you and how you transitioned from a boy to, you know, your high school years, so your senior career to where you're at right now in terms of involvement in football. So go ahead and just share your story. And if need be, if I need any clarity, I'll ask questions as we go along. Yeah, thank you, um, Manning Man. First and foremost, thank you for the platform to have me here this afternoon. Um, them say what never happened in a thousand years at me in a day. <laughs> playing <laughs> for Whitestone or playing for Jamaica, this is my first time having an interview. Whoa. But it all started at Boystone. Everything was Boystone, Boystone, Boystone. From the start of Boystone. Born and grew up in a Boystone. Yeah. My father was um, the groundsman for both cricket and football in Boystone. My mother played a part in the um, in the um, art center. Um um, my uncle Herbert Diego Garden as one of the greatest okay. sports talent out of Jamaica, play for Boystown. I have another uncle by the name of Richard Jackson Windy, play for Boystown. So it's always Boystown. And you have, you, have, you have a nephew now, well, well Ryan, people, if you don't know, um, Joe Donner and Ryan LFC are related. <laughs> it's so strange. You said that man is man. I, I see this youth here on the YouTube talking about football and used to play for Boystown and and him name Rima man. I mean I said, but I don't know this youth here. So I start make some connection for find out, get a number for him. Nevertheless, when we get the number and call the man, I want my uncle, my uncle named Rabbi son <laughs> oh, so, oh, he's your uncle's son yeah he's my uncle's son my uncle robbie's son okay 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 yeah that, that is awesome now, but i know him as brown man i never know him as rima man okay. and then so, him gets a big up and and, and puff up and <laughs> speech a change and all them things so never really recognize him you know awesome awesome so listen all right, so it's all boys stone, but when did you start playing? And I mean, tell us about some of the competition, just, just how the whole thing, you know, um, started. Your first yeah, but, club, but, what position yeah. you play, what kind of player were you? So just go ahead and share that with us. Yeah, I'm happy to do so, um, man is man. You're starting out at um, being ball boy for boy stone, growing up, coming always in a boy stone, 24 7, sometimes sleep over there. Yeah. Boy son was everything. Under 13 coming up, playing with some some good youth, some friends of mine, like a youth named um Johnny Camber, aka Johnny Blacks, live in Canada right now. Delroy Zade Lewis, Rowan Palmer, Garfield Morgan, Andrew Carty, Clive Ellis, Steve Young and, and Cleave two brother. Yeah, so not, not, the, not, not, not the Stevie and Cleavy that are in music. No, no. Okay, okay. <laughs> two just two like... different two different youths. So it starts a boy son under 13. So and then we move on to um coach. But but my first 
um, under 13 coach was Lassell Shaw and Mr. Carl Brown. Oh, so Carl Brown. Okay, okay. Yeah. yeah. Then I went to Boystown All Youth School. Okay. And up to ninth grade, and after ninth grade, um, Mr. Carl Brown um, sent me to Veer Technical High School. But before I went to Veer Technical in 1981, um, there were three friends of mine that went there before me. Rowan Palmer, Milton Hardware, and Garfield Morgan. Oh, so Milton Hardware is related to Jamil Hardware. Yes, he's okay. uncle. Jamil oh. Hardware, uncle. Okay, okay. So Milton Hardware, um, Rowan Palmer, who died. Yeah. And who else? Went Garfield, down there Garfield Morgan went there before me. Oh, Garfield Morgan, okay. That okay. is um, Lydon Mar Crick Morgan, brother, and, and Zander Morgan, um, Crick, brother. Okay, okay. So you never played cricket, though you were at... Um, no, we are, me, no. Me, and, me and Johnny and our under 13, if I'm not football, we are playing cricket, we are playing over boys' town. From one to the other. When we don't play cricket, a football. When we don't play football, a cricket. I, I just, as a boys' town is. Okay, so you never really played any money in cup. You just went to Clarendon College to play. Veer Technical. Veer, Veer Technical. Technical. Oh, you went to Veer. Yeah, I went oh, to Veer so Technical so in 1981. That, that, mean, that mean you'd have played against, like, Lenny Hyde? Uh, no. And, that was uh, Lenny Idem was before me. I oh, was okay. after. I'm a younger guy okay. than Lenny Idem. Okay. I went Aris to Veer 1981. 1981. Okay, so tell us about um, what it was like at Veer. Veer, technically, it, it was easy for me because, because of Milton Hardware and Rowan Palmer. They already set the foundation for me. But Boystown and, and Veer Technical always have a connection. From long before me. Cause Boystown, youth from Trenchon and Boystown always play a part in some institution out there. Okay. So you went to Veer at ninth grade. Um, three so of your friends were there. Uh, how well did the Veer side do during that time? Did you win anything? And who were some of the other notable players on that Veer side? And how like I said, how good was that Veer team in that time? Veer team that 19, Veer win the Dakasa Cup 1980 and went to the final again in 1981. Um, we get beaten by Dintel that year by one goal to nil by one of my good friend Derek Fye from Dintel. Okay. Um, Dintel beat us one, one love that. I did not play in that final. I was on the bench. What, the coach, and I don't know the coach what bench you? Yeah, and, and, and the worst thing about it, man, is, man, I was the third leading goal scorer that year behind Mithkel Dilly and the skipper and Rowan Palmer. And I, in the regular season, I score on Dintel up at Chapit, um, up at Dintel High School. You, yeah, you were that, yeah. yeah. And Rowan Palmer leave the camp in the final and went to him because of um, some boots problem. And I don't know why, if that's why the coach did not give me any game. Even though I did have a knee problem, but I'm saying to myself, why change me on the 18 if you knew I could not play? So leave that to the coach. Okay, so you didn't play in that finals and you lost that year. Yes. All right. Um, did you go back to the finals with Dintel? No, very technical. With sorry, with Veer Technical in 1982, Veer Technical was the only unbeaten school in the Costa Cup that year. We did not lose any game, but we we win the Ben Francis and the Nutriman Shield that year, and we beat up the Manning Cup champion and the Dakasa Cup champion, Cornwall College, and the Manning Cup champion was Camperdown that year. We did not, we, we never went to the final because of one point. That's that's what we we was unbeaten. No team ever beat us that year. Some of some of the players on that team was Rowan Palmer, um, Paul McDonald from KC, one of the best schoolboy defender. So he I came to Ve he came to Veer. Yeah, he came to Veer. Yeah, um, Leroy Bartley from from Duane Park. From I think he used to went to Old Mazar Excelsior to Richard English. Um, a youth named T. Diego, um, our Cephas, um, oh, yeah, Cephas, 
Howard Cephas was, was yeah. um, is a coach now. Yeah. Yes, the yeah. great, the great legend Pala Wilson. Oh, Pala Wilson was on that very team. Yeah. Yeah, man. Oh, yeah, so, man. Because Pala Wilson, Pala Wilson won. Um. Yeah, he was nineteen eighty. He was on that team. Nineteen. Oh, oh, so, oh, so this is now the eighty two team. Yeah, this is the eighty two okay, team. Okay, okay. So them say Pala come to school for them about fourteen, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. He did say that he left um primary school that time. Yeah. And was brought up there by um Creston yeah. Boxhill. Yeah. Um, to Veer and I think. But Pala was a pro. From you see me, he was a pro, you know. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Well, his yeah. attitude towards football. Yeah, because he defeated a, a team with Teagot, I think, at Clarendon College um, that time. I think they defeated Clarendon College when he was at Veer. I think that yeah. it was that year when Teagot was there. Um, at, I think Teagot was at Clarendon and Paula was at Veer, I think, in the 1980 season. Okay. When, yeah. All right. Yeah. So you never really won the, the Costa Cup, but you never lost any game. Right, um, but you were defeated. You said Camperdown was the team that knocked you. Yeah, over. the Manning Cup team was Camperdown, and the Dakar Cup winning champion was Cornwall College. Okay, so and you remember, we beat both of them. Oh, okay. So, so, so you remember any of the Camperdown players? Like any, any? Yeah. Yeah, man. Peter Cargill, my good friend, um, Richard Green, aka Doc Cabra, Boa, um, Mark Salmon as Rugo Rugo. And I want to tell you too, um, that 1982 Camperdown team could consider as one of the greatest schoolboy football team, man there, to man. There's yeah, going to be man some contention they were, because they were great. They were good because the they had team... been playing from minor league days. Okay, but they said that the Lenny High team at Clarendon was one of the biggest teams, and the KC team with Jumpy Harris. They, they always said those two teams are the two. Best schoolboy teams coming out of Jamaica, but you're saying that 82 Camperdown team was also a big team, yes. And the George's 1986 team was big team, too. Okay, you understand? So each is one still. We never really saw the, the Clarendon team, you know. So oh, you never saw the Lenny High team, no. We ever see that team, and um, but I know the players, but I never see them play as a youth. I know the, know the players, so. Each is one. So if a man say C C R K C, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know me, can we are here to agree and disagree. So now have a fight down that. <laughs> yeah, man. Um, uh, Philip Simon is saying, yeah, Joe, you remember scoring that wicked goal outside the 18 at the National Stadium? I don't know. We scored too much wicked goal at the National <laughs> Stadium. You know, you have to, you have, you, you have to start the exact game. <laughs> okay, okay. All right. So, so you, you finish at Veer. You never won anything. After Veer, where did you go? After you Veer, um, yeah. I was called up me and Ruan Palmer for the, the Jamaica juvenile team. Okay. Yeah. Um, with Never Granville was a coach and Bradley Stewart. Um, I'll tell you a story. One week before we went away to Guatemala for the tournament, uh, my knees swelled up. Um, they, didn't, they didn't take me. The, the rumor was me and my good friend, the late great Ron Palmer, rest in peace, my youth, was going to run away because it was a trans transit flight from Miami to Guatemala. So the rumor oh. saying that we was going to run away. Don't know where they get that from, but I think it was my era code or maybe the way <laughs> I used oh. to play the game. Why? Them choose not to call me. And why I say that is because we have... A top at a footballer on that juvenile team. Um, I don't remember his full name, but I know him as Ratty. I think he went to St. Diego. One of my good friends, one of master tapa tapa midfield in those days. And he was on his uncle sold up so big. And they take him and two crook stick and leave me, even though he was a top baller. But I think it was my era code why they did not take me. Whoa. Whoa. So you and you and Rowan Palmer didn't go on that trip. No, Rowan Palmer go. went, but I they okay. didn't take me. Okay, okay, okay. All right, listen. Um, let me just pause to big up all the persons in the comment section. Roadball TV, Military Gona, Fresh God, Demo Dre Nine, uh, Philip Simon, and Ishmael. Big up yourself. Remember, people, when you come on, hit the like button, and if you have not yet subscribed to the channel. All right. So you got called up to the junior team. You didn't get to go on that trip. 
I mean, were you playing for Boys Town during this time and, 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 and stuff and playing in the leagues here in Jamaica during that time for Boys Town? And how were you doing in the league? Yeah, I was playing um, Major League for Boys Town. And, I, and, and my first year, I was voted the best junior player for the yes. Major League. See, see Robert uh, Sanchez, I think they saying Ratty name is David Jones, and he was from St. Catherine. Right, High right. School. Yeah, top yeah. at top midfielder. Okay, okay. All right, yeah, so you, you're playing major you're playing major league for boys yeah. town. Yeah. So and I oh, and so I was voted the best junior player that year. I think it was 1983, 84 season. And, and how old were you at that time? 18, 19. Okay, so so when you called to the junior team, you were like 18, 19, and you're playing for boys town in the major league at 18, 19, you were voted the best junior player. Yes. Playing what? Playing midfield or you were you were a striker, a winger. Just to, to go back a liquor management, I, I started out my under 13 playing right back. Oh. Then I moved to right wing. And then I moved to center forward. When I went to Via Technical, I was a center forward. And then after leaving Via Technical, come to Boys Town, I could not make that forward line. Really? Who was, who, was, who was the forward that time at Boys Town? Them really? time there was the great Bionic Woods and Ali McNam and a youth named Barrington Bull Edwards. At them Monday, I run off the forward line with 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 with, with, with Rowan Palmer and Devon Hardware and, and, and Milton Hardware and them them players them. I couldn't make the forward line. So me have to find a position. I, and I don't even know how it started out playing midfield. It just something just it just happened like that. I don't ever Mr. Brown put me there or or what, but it, it just happened like that. Okay. So you're playing boy playing for Boy Stone, big forward in Ali McNabb and the Ruan Palm and all of these guys. You have to play yeah, midfield. Man. Yeah. How, so how was Boy Stone doing and what was it like in those days? Playing in the competition, you understand me. Going to play against probably Arnett Gardens and the Harbor Views and the Santos and the Tivoli Gardens. What was it like playing? What are some of the memories you have of playing from, football? From, from the 80s, when Boyson started to win back Major League, it, it, was, it was easy for me to make that transaction in, into the game because the guys like you, Bailey, and Sammy D. Davidson, and Thomas Mackley, and Frankie Pablo and so many more guys who play for Boyston before me. There was always a trend setting in a Boyston. You, know? you just look on certain man and follow them game and 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 see from them put on the color red is like is like a different kind of spirit in them. So it was easy for me. But the only thing that when we used to go on at Garden, they used to consider Boyston as labor right. And when we got to Tivoli, them consider Boys Town as PMP. <laughs> so we were always in the middle. You understand? <laughs> but Boys Town is a universal team. No politics business. We may live in the community and people consider we live right. But Boys Town, all different kind of people come to Boys Town come play. You understand? So we, 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 we as footballer, Boys Town, we never put ourselves into politics or never tell a man about me a labor right or, or me a PMP. No. Boys Town, no, we don't carry ourselves them way. Then. I was, then, then Hutchinson, as you know, he was on the program yesterday talking about how he had to kick, he had to kick the ball away, give somebody his bag to take home at Hero's Circle, kick the ball away, pretend like he was going to the ball. And then, um, and then, and then run home because people were going to beat him because of who he was playing for. Did you, did you, did you, I mean, experience incidents like those when you're playing back in your days or everything? It I see, in, volatile man, in man, I see incidents like that, and my me myself go through something like that playing against Tivoli one evening down by Tivoli Comprehensive High School, and I was running down some players and putting some tack upon some player. And uh, a guy from Tivoli said, the next time I run down any Tivoli man and tackle them like that, where am I going to do me? And I really run down a player and put it on upon him. And the man <laughs> pop out him gun and, and fire a shot over me. And the whole Tivoli starts scream out. Yeah. And, and then incident with Thomas Mackley. Thomas Mackley... No care how much 
Tivoli crowd have a beat him up. Him still go down at Tivoli and take the beat up. They always... I don't wait, know wait, if wait, it's wait, the what do you mean by What do you mean by take, take the beat up? Yeah, they, they, like, they would have things up against him. I don't know it's from maybe the, the Man Cup final in 1978 that Camper don't beat Tivoli. Oh, and he from was that for final, he score oh. <laughs> against Tivoli is like the whole Tivoli have something against him. What's his name? Thomas McLean. Thomas McLean. Yeah. yeah. Top oh. midfielder from Camperdown and Boystown. Yeah. Whoa. So, but he always getting beat up and uh, Mr. Carl Brown was the one who was always after uh, take the lick them fee, man. And then the next game, if I play Tivoli, he still go down there. Him just, him just love the game. It's like, you have to kill him for stop play for Boystown. The man there, you cut them, them bleed blood. The only thing them know are boy stone from them, a little youth. So, yeah. them kind of thing they run through man like me and Milton Ardry and Devon Ardry and Delroy Z. D. Lewis and a youth named Manja Carty and the same youth I'm telling him, Johnny Blacks from Canada. And so many more of us. We look on the Johnny Cool and the Les Brown and the Carl Brown and the Black Patch and the Romito Hill and the Archie Reed and the Derek Denisa and so many more and use them as an example and try to play the game like them. Because growing up in Boystown, we never hear them on the ball for a dollar yet or complain for a dollar. Okay, so you guys weren't being paid? No, never being paid over Boystown. Never. People see me out of the road and say, Joe Donna, you all right, man. Boystown give you a whole heap of money. And them don't even know the real story. All we are playing for boys town is for our community and, 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 the, and the people of our community and the love for the game. Nothing else. Sometimes we play a game pan not even look at tea, not even lunch. And we are for out the 3 30, 4 o'clock in the sun. And people are cuss we and say all kind of thing and don't even know say not even look at breakfast provide for us. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Um, um, Ishmael King is saying that he remembers that memorable match against Harborview um, in the National Stadium. Uh, I think you were part of that game, Boystone versus Harborview in the National Stadium. Um, as I said, I'm not a specific card. Uh, maybe the one he's talking about is 1980 when Boystone come from behind 10 minutes down, Harborview leading to love and come back. I'm, I want to tell you something to Man, Mr. Manning. I leave that game when half of you scored the second goal and I was not playing that time. Yeah. And, and me and my friend them walk out of the stadium and we reach all the way down near to yeah, cross. Yeah, but he said, that, he said that people were walking out. Yes. Yeah. And it's a guy have a radio and listen to the game and I said, to all. And me and my friend them say, hey, when you move from here, sir? Which to yeah. all. And the man said, I don't lie, me I tell, come over here, sir, come listen. <laughs> and when we go over there, go listen, we hear to all. Money, you know, say me and my friend them run all the way back from crossroad <laughs> and reaching a stadium, never worry about tiredness and never tired. When we reach oh. in a stadium, the man them sit down and wait for penalty kick. Oh, and then, <laughs> couple of years after, in about 1985, half of you did us the same thing. We have them three one, they have the one love in the first leg, and the second leg, we score three goals, and they come back and score three goals on us. In that Whoa. in that game, so that that is the final of the major league. Yeah, that is the final of major yeah, league. I, hear, I always hear people talk about the games between Boystone and Harborview. Um, yeah. Back in the day, that was like a major major rivalry during yeah, that man. time. Stadium, 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 nice man. All road lead to the national stadium. So how many Never persons were in the right stadium now? at that time? Man, eh? How many persons were like how many? I don't know how many people were in the stadium watching games like this. Man is man. I never, me never talk about, me can't talk about my time, but I talk about before my time. You ever say, Boyston Santos a player yet? Boyston Cavaliers? Boyston Remona? Boyston have a view? Boyston Cavaliers? People, they have stayed on from 12 o'clock in the afternoon. Whether they might lick off a gate or look somewhere for jump the fence. Goosebump. Me go back as Jamaica, a couple of years, and I went to a final. Tivoli a player, Waterhouse, Manning's man. And them have to make all of the people them, they over grandstand. Nobody now watch a football. 
Can you tell me what went wrong in Jamaica, uh, Mr. Mannings? People that's, are that's a, that's a heavy now. Hard, so you can help me to understand what is what People are professional wrong. now, getting paid to play the game and nobody watching football anymore. Yeah. I asked that question to many spectators who used to watch a game or a player, and I can't get the right answer. I, I, I cannot understand it. We used to play for free. The man then before we used to play for free. And now guys are getting paid and nobody watching football. Yeah. Yeah, that, that is what we're trying to figure out. It, it, you know, I mean, is there too, maybe there are too many things for people to do now. So they don't. And, and maybe the football is not as competitive as how it used to be back in your time. Or, 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 you know, because in those times i mean the fields weren't the best in those times and the facilities weren't the best and like i said the coaching may not have been the best but um people were were i mean football was the big thing and maybe all of those dynamics have changed so i don't know the, the younger persons watching too many too, too much of the football on tv and when they compare what they see on tv to what they see in jamaica it, it don't work the time and and, yeah. and, and and that is part of the problem we're having right now because when I hear these stories about what used to happen that a game being played at the stadium and 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 a full stadium, I mean yeah. not even not not even a double header where you have the yeah. semifinals in the stadium, yeah. you have it full to capacity right now. Yeah. You understand me? So um, but yeah, so tell us now about. So that is Boy Stone. You had success winning the major league, all of those things. See Ryan LFC, um, say big up, big up cousin. You understand yeah. me? <laughs> yeah. And that yeah. is um um yeah. Rima man right there. That, yes. That's how you know him. And um, so, so uh, after after juvenile and playing for Boy Stone, um um my father, I call him my father, Mr. Carl Brown. Uh, and why I use father is because the things that he do for me met me and so many generation um in trenchstone and boystone in terms of football i call him my father because he was my under 13 coach my minor league coach he's the one who sent me to very technical he's the one give me my first call at the national level and i must be grateful and thankful to him for that. Yeah, so you still keep in touch with him? Um, yeah, man, I always, I always keep in touch with him. Legendary person. I mean, part of the team that qualified for the World Cup. In fact, he, he started the work with that, with yeah. the core of that team before Rene Simois yeah. came. And worked but, with so many teams over the yeah. years, you know? But I want to go back just a liquor before I made the national team. Uh, my, my, my friend Ron Palmer uh, made the national team before me. Um, and the same year that he get called, his life was taken away. Yeah. And and that night, his life was taken away. Me and him was sitting on that wall, shoulder to shoulder, talking about what he's gonna do or what we want to do. Um, growing up and and a little emotion reached me right now. Just you know, remember almost thirty year, thirty nine years ago. Whoa. Yeah, and, and it seems still feel like yesterday. Um, because after leaving training that evening, a hard training session from Mr. Carl Brown, um, we went by uh, my mother's house and he said he's going up to a wall of shower. And I tell him I soon come. And when I go up there, someone showed me and, and him on the other side of the wall. And why I'm saying this is because he was more than just a footballer to me. He was a real, real, real friend to me. Um, I remember days and nights after training and when I go over my mother's house and went to the kitchen, all of the pot them turned down. And I have to make his run out of the house to go catch Rowan before him eat for him dinner. Yeah. And he have always shared that with me. And Rowan's mother was a lady who sent her, sell her pudding and her banana and orange. And he was always shared those little things with me. So he was more than just a footballer to me. It was, he was my best friend at the time, a brother, real, real brother. 
So did, did losing losing him as a friend at that early age and him being called up inspire you to know want to go on and prove yourself and just carry on his legacy and you know just you know be a regular fixture in the national team and how did that work when you got called up and 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 when did you play your first game for Jamaica? When did you score your first goal for Jamaica? How did that feel? And you know how do oh because people uh, but but go ahead and tell me that and then I have a follow up question. Yeah, man, is man, it, it it was it was sad, but at the same time, I use it as a, as a motivation. Um, my coach and my teammate from Boystown, even my mother, they did not know what I was going through. I almost stopped playing football mentally. My, I, 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 I inside of me died from that night. It take me a while before I even want to go and play football again. And I remember the first night after Ron Palmer, Palmer passed away, boy, son was playing. I don't remember the team. And I can remember after the game, it was tears. Just remember him, tears from me, tears from Delroy Zaydi Lewis. Um, and, but I don't think many of the players was watching me or see what's going But it was an emotional night because that was the first time from under 13 days that he was not on the field with me or with us playing yeah right so yeah he so he yeah man so you started playing back football i guess at boystone when did yeah. you get you no know, like your first call up to the national team um after rowan passed away um it just happened it it, it, it was a motivation to for, for keep the legacy and 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 use that negative to inspire me to um play good football work hard um i'm keeping name alive for me to just tell myself stop playing the game come like a two, two of us would be die at the same time and it would it wouldn't make no sense so i use my inner strength and use run as an example um for for carry on and 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 the carry on that i good um, I think he was always with me and helped me through those tough times to, and say, Joe, don't, Joe, don't give up. Um, this is where we love and you have to do this to me. And, and so Ruan passing away was an inspiration to me. Okay. So you, yeah. you get called to the national team now. Um, yeah. When did you play the first game and again soon? I, I think I played the first game in, in, at the National Stadium against an Asian team. And then okay. in, in 1986, my first tour to Miami with Jamaica team. Um, okay. I, um, I think it was Gold Cup or Winter Game, they used to call it at that time. I think it used to play like um, January or February. And my first international goal was a team game named Paraguay. Oh, you we against played Paraguay. in Paraguay, Uruguay, and Colombia. The great oh. Valderrama no, from Colombia. And we do okay. You, 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 played, you played against Valderrama? Yeah, man. Valderrama would have killed with shift. <laughs> <laughs> but, 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 so, but you know, them big, time there, I, I think them you're time a big man. Yeah. Eh? I think you're a big footballer. You manage to make Valorama kill with the shift in the midfield. No, man, just literally speaking, still not really. Cause I know that Joe Down and I really take them thing there. <laughs> even, even if you shift, shift me up, you don't know, so your anchor go get some farm of burn. And, and then, not, Les Brown and Johnny Cole, them not grow me up them way there. We not take shift them way there. No care who the, no care who the man is or who the ball is. Okay, you understand? So you, you but I was speaking like, yeah. Um, the field in Miami, I think it was orange bowl. Um, the group, the type of grass was like more than carpet. We were soft, it is. So, you know, Jamaican, we already, when we see grass, the field, we have to slide tucker and do all <laughs> kind of thing. So it was, it, I don't want to tell you too. Man, it's man. We have done, um, Colombia 2-1 in that game. And they came from behind and beat us, think like 4-2. Oh. But we wasn't playing. We never organized our system or nothing at that time to 
keep the ball, so to speak. We have we have different players from different clubs like Wadada, Reno, Harverview. Who were some of the players who were in that in that Jamaica team that went to that winter game? Played against Paraguay and Colombia. Who are some of the players that you remember? You know, six players from one other was there. I don't know if you ever remember the whole of them. Corbett, Gainer Blocks, Brooks, Spider Man. Um, I think they made have a, a little youth name, Short. He was um, Rossi's captain. They say he was the youngest schoolboy. He was so good, they bring him on the trip. Trip. I am. Um, don't remember the next player. All right. Who, who are some of the other players? Yeah, man. Who are some of um, the other players that you remember? Paul T. Got Davis um, was there. So, Ali um, McNabb wasn't in that team? No. That was 86. Okay. I think all of them stopped player from that time. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, a youth named Garfield Plummer. Okay. So, you scored against Paraguay? Yeah. Did you win the game? Did no, you, did, I tell you, so we, we lose 4-2. Oh, that's against Colombia. We come back and beat with 4-2 in that game. Okay. So you lost all the games in that tournament? Yeah, we lose all the games in that tournament. Did you guys participate in any qualifiers to go to the World Cup during your time? Did you play World Cup qualifying football? Well, I, I didn't get the chance because um, I always get a, a real struggle from juvenile days to the national side. Manning's man for... For some reason, I don't know. Um, in 1988, because I think I am one of the only youth who got to about five, six national coach in that time. Playing five years for Jamaica, about five, six different coach. Maybe me, Mikey Tolo, and, and T got can be um couple of the few men who got to so many co national coach. Okay, so you never you, you never really played in World Cup qualifying. No, I, I in, in, in nineteen eighty eight Jeffrey Maxwell um was a coach. Um um Puerto Rico came to Jamaica. I played in that game. And after that game, listen me carefully, ladies and gentlemen, after that game, playing good, I, I, I think I don't remember if I scored that night. Um Jeffrey Maxwell never put me back on the team. I asked him why at the time because man's man your listener can are who watching football from all along donovan jordana internationally nationally and locally in the 80s i was a performer from midfield i was the goal scorer if you go back and check and when i couldn't make a jamaica 22 man squad i started to ask jeffrey maxwell how comes him said, Joe Donna, don't worry, man. We're carrying a Puerto Rico. And I said to him in the McDonald Tunnel, Jeffrey Maxwell, where you think I come here for? For fly up and playing? A football, I want to play now. And every morning after training, Jeffrey Maxwell would take me to, them time I was working with Separat. And Separat was out by DNG on Spanish Town Road. I used to work out that side. And he was questioning me every morning, Joe Donna, have you ever gone to America yet? And, and all this. And, but I wasn't taking notice why he was asking me this question. But I'm saying I went to Miami in 1986 to play for Jamaica. And I came back home. Because football is everything to me. Eat, sleep, okay. it, talk, it, everything football. So at 18, 19 years old, 20 years old, Leave me off of the national team because of my era code. Okay. I couldn't understand it. Okay, because, because at that time okay. I was performing. I was okay. one of the top midfielders in Jamaica. Okay. So, so you're basically saying that you they didn't bring you um, in the team because when they were going away, they felt like you have, you'd have run off or something. It's not like they said that's what was the argument that I was going to run away. So Jeffrey Maxwell at one time was trying for me to be the skipper for the national side, but not knowing that was the only way I would be able to go to America to play in oh. qualifying for World Cup game. Oh, wow. Because coming from Trenchtown, playing for Boyson, my year could, that's all I could say. Because at that time, there is no national side where I should not make nothing with the 18-man squad because I was a top midfield goal scorer at the time in Jamaica. Were there any other midfielders that you'd say were close to you during that time 
playing for Yeah, man, top of top of midfielder, man. You name Winston Anglin, Twinnybug. Okay. Football, God, that man. Yeah. Yeah, man. But, man, but the man not on a weakness. What me say? Him not on a weakness. Peter Cargill, Valentine. Oh, you have is, a, you that have is Wapi. Yeah, Wapi. You have a youth name. Can't remember him from Arnett Yard. He was a skipper for Arnett Yard no, back in the days. Can't remember his name. Oh, oh gosh. I hope him not vexed me. Yeah. Okay. No, I don't know. It, uh, because the players are like, it's not Prince or no, not Prince or Not Prince or He was a skipper. David something name. Oh, no. I think he used to go to Ulmas. Yeah, okay. but he was one of those midfielders who give me a lot of trouble. Okay. Yeah. Okay. okay, so the team didn't qualify for any World Cup in that time. So, no, I mean, based on what you have shared with the history, what, what are your thoughts on football now in Jamaica, especially in Boyston? Because Boyston don't even have a uh, I mean, Boyston is in one now. Major League, Super League, somewhere there. Trying Boyston, to get back in Boyston in, is in nothing. And and it's a shame because of mismanagement of Boyston. Okay. Yeah, because we, we have to understand Manning's man. When when former Boyson players before my uh, time. Um, F Philip Simon is also reminded that Howard Seifert was also a good midfielder in that time. Yes, man. Yes, man. No yeah. doubt. There was a lot of good midfielder, but I just call him name from what on my lip. I can't remember everybody. everybody no yeah, disrespectful to, to anyone. Yeah, man. But go back yeah. to your Boyston. Yeah, man. So Boyston, yeah. they're yeah, not so in anything right now. They're falling down. I mean, even when they were in the Premier League, they, were looking, they weren't looking good. I mean, Andrew Price was the coach, and I mean, they had some good young players. I think Jamil Hardware was there, and they had um, Jeremy and Benjamin and Garfield Gillespie and Michael Campbell and all of those guys, and they just kind of slowly faded out of the league. And, you know, yeah. What, 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 I mean, because when you talk about Boyston and football, there are so many names that come up. Yeah. I mean, and you think like so many of you guys are even overseas. Why hasn't anything been done? To, to, to fix the problems at the Boystown? The problem at Boystown, why Boystown cannot get the help and refuse to take the help because a certain people want to always control Boystown. And people who oversee the diaspora or wherever in Jamaica try to give are helping on to Boyston, but people, Boyston old boy, refuse to manage the club of Boyston. And the youths who play for Boyston from, say, the 2000, they, they're not like you, Bailey, and Thomas McClay, and Donald Davison, and Devon Hardware, and Milton Hardware, and Bumaid, and Mary Cyrus, and Donovan Panton and the Trevor Francis and the names goes on. is a different crop of youth. And all these youth are dealing with this money. And we now say the youth them must not get money. And Boystone have to understand it's not the days when Joe Down are playing for Boystone and playing for free. Now them youth are now lace them boats. Right now, in this time, if it was a Joe Down or a Thomas McClay or a Hardware or a UBL or a Lenny Hyde or, or a Sammy D, we would still be at Boystown. No money couldn't stop you from playing for Boystown. But these you grew up without any seeing what Boystown is all about. My yeah. generation growing up watching those people before us like Les Brown and Johnny Cole and Carl Brown and Lasha. Those men play night and day without asking for a dollar. Les Brown don't play a game. Not one day Les Brown play a game and him not have two, get two cherry at the side of him leg. Him slide from backer, him slide from stone, him slide from him to and make a tackle. Slide yeah, and drop to make a goal score against Boyston. Boyston, we, boy we don't like losing. Uh. That not in our DNA. If you beat me, that means you're better than we that night. But we never... We never give up. Wait, wait, what do you mean that them slide and battle? What battle do you mean? Remember, I played dirt to play upon you know, Manning's man. 
And in the country where they were like a grass there, you know. <laughs> boys Town was dirty, you know. And couple many years after I go back to Jamaica, Boys Town is rated in the top five football team. Grass, green, light. Football, football, football field. field. Football field, yeah. yeah. And man, and guess what? When training done, them used to walk out of Boys Town, you know. When we used to play in darkness, Dirt field, stone field. You think anybody could have get me out of Boys Town? We now go home to ours. So it's a different youth, them, and a different time. But Boys Town have to understand that so they have to go out there to find help for the youth, them. And I, I can't say it's where Boys Town is because I'm the garden up there, so Tivoli garden down there, so water or something, so other team in ghetto era, too, and they're getting the support and the help. Why Boys Town cannot get it? Or if them get it, I don't know. Because from 1940, I have picture with Boys Town football team from 1940 until this time. You understand what I'm saying? And Boys Town should never, ever in the condition. Not even water over Boys Town. Not even water. But Jamaica is a type of place. Them no hold nobody accountable for nothing at all. You give your man your business, and when you come back, your business is flat, and yet still you're not for fire him. He must keep the job. What kind of system is that? Okay. So you, you want to see more accountability in the football? It have to, in Boys Town, because charity start at home first. Yeah. Boys Town being used in that format of old boy thing from how long, and, and football change, everything change now. You have to change with the time. You have to get the young people them to get involved. Boys Town football money and the whole world must know what's taking out of Boys Town. Football, who we keep the community together, was taking out of a Boys Town. How can you do that? Even if Boys Town are lose, you don't take out the sport out of the community. That's what makes the institution be knowing cricket and football, but mostly football. You understand? So when you are going to take football out of Boys Town, what the community are going to be like? Eh? What do you them are going to turn to? No, Boys Town drop out of the National League maybe three years ago. They have to find their way back to the National League. Now, to my understanding, no team will be drop out of the National League for a couple of years. So, Milton Hardway, brother, Leon Hardway, otherwise I know as Mickey, of 30 to 40, Youth when take off of the street in Trenchstone Rima and have them over Boys Town every day coaching them. What is he coaching them for? For somebody else to come when they reach whatever and take them over play for another club? Boys Town is suffering. And nobody is there to talk for Boys Town. The president is not there for talk for Boys Town. The, 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 the president of the football is not there to talk for Boys Town. Nobody is talking for Boys Town. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Somebody, somebody, um, let me just 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 get a couple of questions. People are, are really appreciate the comments. If there's a particular comment that you think is very important that I, I have not brought to the attention of Mr. Dona, just keep putting it because I don't want to interrupt him when he's making um some of the points, right? So just work, just work with the program. It's not a matter of ignoring you. Also, please um hit the like button. Um, once you come on and subscribe to the channel, if you have not, um, uh, Robert Sanchez is asking if you did get banned after the final against Seba in 1987. No, I did not get banned in 1987, but I, I get banned, I think, in 1985 at a game playing against Waterhouse at Stadium East Field. Show you how JFF have been giving me a hard time from, from youth days. And for so many years, the only reason why JFF or Kasafa never get rid of me is because Donovan Jordan always performing, always scoring a big goal. So they have to check themselves to an incident at Mount Stadium East. The referee gave me a red card. They, I think they, they have all the tape. The JBC was there, videoing the game. To where the game was going, I walk. When the referee gave me the red card, man is man. I walk past 
the referee. When I was in the changing room, man's man, a little youth come to me and say, Joe Downer, the game mash up, you know. Some say, oh, the game mash up. Him say, yeah, the spectators run on and I beat the referee. Did you know that the referee writing his report say it's Joe Downer calling on the, the spectators on the field to beat him? JFF suspend Joe Downer alone for two years on Boystown out of the National League. I am the only one get suspended and at the time of the incident Joe Dona never even did near the field so these are the fight where JFF or Kassaf or whatever they want to call themselves get Joe Dona from a little youth trying to take away my, my talent in Jamaica all the years okay so you weren't really you got a red card yeah you're going to changing room yeah people um you said attack the referee. Yeah. And you got banned for two years. Yes. It was 85. So you, you, you never played any football from between 85 and 87. Right. No, I played. Oh. No, it, I, I, I think it was maybe 84, 85. Because 87, I played the first final that Seba beat us. Um, I played in that final in 87. Okay. So I okay. maybe come back. Um, it was maybe 85, 86, and then 88, we beat back Siva, Siva in the final. Okay. Yeah, man, people, so please. Between 84, 85, or 85, 86, I get banned out of the football for two okay. years. Okay. Okay. Whoa. Uh, people, please hit the like button. Interesting, interesting story. And um, let's let's move forward. What what are your thoughts now on, on, on football in Jamaica generally? Not just Boystown, but the state of football in Jamaica and in particular, our national team? Because I know you're over there in the States now. You watch the games, you see the team playing, and you must be looking back and thinking about, you know, your time as you watch the game and the, the, the talent pool and, you know, how, what, what do you think the team is good enough to qualify? What, what are your thoughts on the, 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 the Jamaica national senior team and football in general in Jamaica? The football in Jamaica, for me personally, I think the football get a beat. No? And the football get a beat no? because of mismanagement from up at the top. Because you have to start up the center. No? And, 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 and when you start up at the top, where the problem is, you are putting people in a position and allow them to, to feel, feel we as farmer players um I, I, I go to jamaica as i said i went to jamaica i, I don't like where the football going i cook as i see it from a schoolboy level i see where school playing at their own field now and when half time the, the the guys have to be sitting on the ground dirt ground so what happened to the principal of this school and the coaches of this school? Why don't they have a say and stop the football until they provide better play field to see better football for, for our Manning Cup or Dakasa Cup or, or our football at the ice level? Why okay. nobody being... Yeah, go ahead. Oh, so one, one of the things you're saying is that the, 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 the school need to take a position where... The, the infrastructure need to develop so the players can. It, it, you're basically saying that it shouldn't be the same way when you were playing. Things should no, get better. No, no. Okay. After 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 thirty years, me leave Jamaica and 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 and, and, and go back home. That means we have people who don't care, but just a hustler for the sports. That means we want people for a look as far as them I can say. That means. 40, 50 years down the line, you, you, you set a foundation, you set up the foundation. You know what I mean? No foundation is set in. It just, it just cut and run and go on. Nobody. Cause we, 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 the people, them just like the game, but we don't love the game. We not sure so we love the game. And the changes have to start from coaches. Because I see where many coaches have a whole heap of pre mother in a Jamaica. Spoil them and broke them, but because them is a good footballer. Pele was the greatest footballer, Maradona, and all of them leave the game. All of them leave the game, and the game still a play. You understand? 
So when a man come and say, this man is the best footballer in the world, I don't like it, man. Each and every position in the field, you must say that man is the best forward or the best midfielder or the best defender or the best goalie. You can't give a one man. Messi them can't play defense. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. But our football, we need to put people in a position. We need them to have about, um, this butler. People say all kind of thing about butler. I don't know the man. All I can say, we need to give a man like that a chance. Give him a chance and say what he can do. People like Andrew Price, them need to take up leadership role because people, why, why you have the education and you understand the game and you love the game and you're sitting by just talking and nobody. We're not organized. We're not mobilized. We're not get the best of the best them and say, you know, say Jamaica football need an emergency operation. It, it, the sadness about it is people getting paid, paid to play the game. When me I play for the national side, up I stay down me have to sleep. We don't get three meals a day. We don't get nothing named doctor. Them send you over stay down west. I want Chinese lady do something named Ultra Sword. Me play for the national side for five years and me never get an x ray on my knees. Me. Cause me always have a knee problem, you know. A miracle me use and, and, and got through football because of hard work and determination, you know. When me say Les Brown, when me a 12 year old, me run 13 lap with Les Brown. Man is man. And when me stop, Les Brown was so focused running. Cause when him run a 50 and 60 lap him run. And when, me run, and when me run 13 lap and stop. And when him reach by about 40 yards and realize that me not decide I am. Him turn back and stop. And him said, that's why you need them keep hurt you. You must run them out. And I said, Les, but I run 11 lap already because I account. Him said, I have to run. Manning's man. I remember playing for boys on Manning's man. I used to work up, wake up 5, 6 o'clock in the morning. Yeah. And I have double building. I have like 11 building in my scheme where me live. Double building and single building. Fourth yeah, store. Fourth floor, of course, yeah. and I run down them steps the every morning, morning's man. After I don't run them down, I jump the wall and go over boy store. And I tell myself, I'm not gonna stop run until sun come out. Sometime I'll dead man over boy store, and me I run over dead man. Never know some dead people over there. You understand? That's how me love the game. Remember one time boy store win national league, and me ask them for a TV. And a spectator was telling me, boy, son said they could not give me the TV. You know, so the next morning, morning's man, at five o'clock, I wake up and, and, and I run over boy, son, because I love the game. No TV never ever stop me. No money never ever stop me from playing the game of football that I love. This is the only thing me know. Football. Yeah. Sometimes even my family, I say, hear him, hear him. That's all in Tabo. Football and, and boy, son. People tell me to leave all boy, son business alone. I can't leave Boystone business alone. Boystone business are my business. Boystone, that's not the Boystone when we grew up in a... Uh, yeah, so somebody here saying, um, let me just take this comment and then we'll come back to this fascinating story. Bozart Godfrey saying that Joe was not a pretty boy on the field. Reno get a hard time from Joe. <laughs> <laughs> like... <laughs> yeah, Reno but, give um, us... Reno give us a hard time too, you know, because <laughs> um, in the 80s there was some top of top baller for Reno, skillful youth and thing, and you can't nurse them youth there. Them youth they will make you look like fool. You understand? <laughs> so you have to depend on your head. Yeah, yeah you're, you're the bite time of the midfield. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, man. When Mr. Carl Brown, any, any danger man from any team, man, Mr. Carl Brown, either me or Milton Hardware, or, 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 or you, Bailey, and Thomas McLean, we are mark any any yeah. serious threat player from anywhere. Yeah. yeah so let me let me see. So you're saying that part of what needs to happen at the national level is that we need other people in the administration of football generally so we can we can fix the football and that include even the principals at the school saying, listen, until the infrastructure is developed, we probably need to stop playing football because we need to pass the place where our players are sitting on dirt at halftime not having proper facilities 
and stuff. But what, what you say about the national team? Is this national team, in your opinion, because this is your opinion, how good you think this team is and do you believe this team can qualify um, for the World Cup? Yeah, before even the World Cup people talk about this national side, the talent. But me growing up and knowing football and watching football all these years, talent alone no win football. Talent alone. If a talent alone, boy stone no win nothing at all. Cause people never consider us of a boy stone as talented team. We kick and run or or whatever. You understand? So we we have the ingredients to to go on next World Cup. And the organization and, 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 and me personally, I have nothing against Tapa. But my country come first and football come first. And if, if the, the Prime Minister of Jamaica not take care of the country, who do you think the people they might blame? The Prime Minister if something went wrong. So Tapa is our Prime Minister for our football and JFF. So any, one thing we must understand you now, we all have one thing in common. All of us love Jamaica and want Jamaica to good, do good and go to the World Cup final. So when you hear people attack and a jump and bag one or a jump up, people just upset that we now get the result. And the talented set of players we have, we shouldn't have struggled. So you understand? So, but, but you can't jump into the water if you can't swim. You have to prepare for all of that. So, top off, understand without result, these things are going to happen. But my problem is, 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 is not really the results. It's, oh, we're, not, we're playing like we're not at war. We're playing like we're playing practice game. Changes make like a practice game we are playing. We're, we're, we're trying to reach the World Cup final. We know some people that want to duck up them gears or, or anything like that. We want, we want to go down fighting. We don't just want to play football just to play football. See. We want people to get hundred and fifty percent We want people to talk to people. People are pull people jersey. People are urge on people. And one of, the, one of the main things as a coach, I believe, the first thing you must find is a leader. And the national team right now don't have a leader. Because our leaders are all away in the back. And I don't see them vocal enough more than Nandi. He seemed to be the one who is vocal. But oh, that's, that's Damien Law. That Damien Law. Oh, because in front, in front he, of him, Nandi, you know, so careful yeah, now. <laughs> yeah, I'm a good friend. Me that our team Sunday too, so he yeah. understand. So, <laughs> but, so we need... We need we need we need to put up a real fight. And sometimes sometime we have to have leaders who have to call the team together without the coach and sit down and talk and, and talk about what we need to do from what we need to do. And we have three million dollars Jamaica plus how much million in the diaspora are depend upon, upon us, upon we, for the good and for take us to the World Cup. But if we don't even make it, Put out a fight, man. Yeah, give, so, give, okay. uh, give, give, give your all, man. When you come off of the field, man, you must be tired. You know, if you play a football game, man, you're tired. My coach, Mr. Cardone, once told me, say, when he prepare me, if a man get a ball before me, it's not because me tired. It's because he's faster than me. And he can't give me speed. But never, ever say, you're tired. The next man out, they're tired too. Yeah. You understand? So everything we have go wrong with the national side, it has to rest on the coach. Yeah, so and the coach, the, coach, the, the coach, coach, the coach, the coach have to take charge. You have to yeah. take charge of your football team. If people give responsibility for take care of your workplace or anything, you have to take care of it. That's your job. That's your team. If a man no one, do what you say for do. Put him on the bench or take him off of the squad. Tell you an incident what happened. We were playing a game in Montego Bay. I'm um, one year against Wadada. Place wet. And my coach, my father, Mr. Carl Brown, asked me to play the ball forward to Lenny Idem. And I tell him, say, I don't do it because there is a time where I have to possess the ball and I just kick with the ball. And he said, I have to do it him. 
one Mufido. And I said to him, say, take me off. And him take me off. But you can't talk to the coach like that. What you no, I never talk to him. I try to disrespect the coach because I never oh, was a disrespectful oh, you. Oh, oh, but at oh, the time, oh. me, me, me get to bigger <laughs> myself. You understand? And him take me off. So that's a coach. You understand? Play all me want you for play. Are you getting you substituted? Understand? Yeah, I'm me the coach. This is this is only one you have to play, guys. This is my system or our system. You understand? And it's a boy stone like long ball, so that's a boy stone system. Long ball, two pass, kick the ball in at the goal. I don't mind if you make five, ten, fifteen, twenty pass and score a goal, as long as the ball in net. But we have a team who have no confidence, no confidence. And that confidence can come from the individual himself or the coach, what the coach practice in training. Nobody so what if Tapa, Tapa, Tapa could also say that, I mean, the, yeah, it's supposed to be my team, but I am not being given the tools to do the job that I want to do. What, what do you say? Um, you can't work on a car and a man, you have to wrench and a man give you a screwdriver. That no work. At the end of the day, who will pick 11? Or the organization are a topper. If the organization I pick 11, that means topper no worthy to be a coach then. Me, me personally will never allow myself. No care what kind of money me have a lose or whatever. Me not do that. Me have my principle with me stand up on. Because and you're, and you, and you're, and you're a coach. And me a, a coach, and a coach, yeah. and me a coach from, from Jamaica. When Carl Brown, Mr. Carl Brown used to leave the boys' son team, me are the main man when you Bailey and, and Sammy used to leave and they oversee. Me are the main man who was the leader and the coach. My so coach boys you. minor leagues. My coach. So I, so hold on so I invite you to coach my team. And I say, listen, them money have to play, you know. You run a training session and me bring in five players and say, listen, them money have to play. What would you do? Them money have to play? Yeah, me, me bring in five players and say them money. I have never, play I never see them play yet. You never see them play yet. But I might I might I might TV adjust the coach. What do, what do you do? I either me go stand up for the money or 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 me go just leave and tell us that this can't work. I either me worry about my pay when me go get or me go lose. Because I two things, you know. I either you also do the game. Or you go stand up for where you believe in. And if JFF I pick any team and get tapper that, that can't work, that not supposed to work. I don't know if it used to happen to other coach back then. Because I never know all these years me I play for Jamaica. I never know say is JFF or Kasafa pick the national side you know? All this time I think say is every coach who win the league. Call the players them from other club. I never know say it was JFF. So the Panama game at the National Stadium, Tapa never seen none of these men play football, especially our top fielder down at Jamaica. Eight new men, you never see them play yet. And, and because of JFF, you have to put them on the field, me never have a coach. Talk for me personally, me never have a coach. Every you man see, of them. You say if that was you, you'd walk off the job? Have me walk off of the job. Me never ever play people who me never see play yet. Tapa, I, I first time Tapa see them play there. Uh, well, not all of them. I think it is the first time you would have been seen Mikel Antonio, Kemar Roof. Um, um, yeah, but, but you would have seen Daniel Johnson and Bobby Reed play before. He, he had Liam Moore play before. Um, the, the one named Isat. So he has he had seen some of them play already. I think three of those players he may not have actually seen play if memory so, serves me right so, so man I, is man but he wasn't he wasn't preparing them though apparently he because he was of course aware of the other game so paul all was preparing them apparently for this game so yeah I, I, like i we still don't like the truth is that we don't know how the selection of the squad went because nobody has come out and said um like i picked the team no yeah. so we don't we don't know we can only speculate yeah, because I hear rumor in New York say is cause JFF pick pick the team and get tapper and them never even want no local player on it. 
Well, they say they say they say and that if it is top of a fight for three players to he, play. He said, he said that he said okay. Well, if it now, but let's say if it is said in New York, it is so. But because New York is where the people talk, so I don't know. <laughs> yeah, man, me have me 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 link and me chat him out, friend them, Rona and partner and Beze United, you know. <laughs> yeah, 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 Bam Bam and Kiwa, <laughs> you me at all. Yeah, we are called Bam Bam name from Kansas Ring, but don't get the one mixed <laughs> up in the head. <laughs> Bob, Bob, tell him not to call any of them. The man they had the link, man, you know? The man they had, have the linkage. Yeah. Along with Sir Palmer and Diego. The man they have the linkage. Bob, Bob, we don't know about yeah. Diego. Bob, Bob, don't tell him not to call any of them. Yeah. yeah, but... But, but, but man, is man, to go about me personally, I would not coach that team. Somebody else said I have to call and coach that team. You, you, you have to stand up for something, you know? Yeah. Where you believe in you know, her, you have to stand up for something. You understand? You don't make people give anything for eat where you don't eat. You have to stand up for something. Yeah. All right. All right. So here's the next good question. How would you advise if you if Tapa is listening, or how would you advise him to merge the, the, the English um the players playing in England um and the other players playing elsewhere in Europe who develop in Jamaica? Say so for example, how how does he fit together uh um how does it fit together how does he fit together Mikel Antonio and the Leon Baileys and the Ravel Morrison with the with the um you know the law and the taxi how do you how do you advise him at this stage to kind of bring everybody together so all of this talent can can produce results well, just, just, just my opinion, uh, Manning's man. Looking at Tapa Whitmore, me personally, I said before, I have nothing personal against him. But I remember the night when Ron Palmer was killed. He was saying something to me that night, and I didn't even believe those words were coming out of his mouth. And in one of the things he was saying, to me, he said, if you have a friend and you cannot tell him the truth, he's not your friend. And Jamaica is a, is a partiality place where people are afraid to tell them friend the truth. Because you don't want to offend your friend. But that is not my thing. If me believe, so when I tell you is the truth, me will make you know. Me personally. Yeah. But it 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 hard. It very hard in, in a sense for Tapa. In terms of for get that togetherness. Because the player, the coach is one you know, but the player have to come together yeah. for the one common goal. For the red, green, and gold, and black. And said to herself, we, we have the material. All we need is to uh, I, I don't like. I don't, I don't like how you're squeezing the boy stone color in the national flag. You know, it's black, green, and gold. No red, no in there. No, the red, nine, nine. no, keep the red brigade. Keep the red brigade. <laughs> my bad, my bad. Uh, keep, the, 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 keep the red brigade out of the national flag. Black, green, and gold. So it, so it, so with me. Mr. Manning, that 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 that, that color red, the man, is it, it, like a disease, you know. Yeah, well, that's yeah. Right. Sometimes me I talk to even <laughs> me, me, me look at football team. Me call Boyston name. Forgot say I'm a Boyston. Yeah, yeah. So, but I don't, uh, forgive me. But the players, yeah. they say the players have to come together as well. Yeah, the, the players have to come together as of well. His team. Yeah, but, yeah, and this team. Can remember, you know, it's not like 1998 and before where. Um, the co corrosive of the team, they are Jamaica, and it need a little ingredients to make it taste nice and fix it up. No, everybody is overseas. That's why Jamaica football looks so bad now, because from your name start called Jamaica, it's not like back in the 80s or 70s. You're going on some trials are going overseas to play football. So yeah. you will never have that, that coaching 
in we, a, we, that we, we, in a Jamaica yeah, yeah, because we, we, as soon we, as they get big, right, right, yeah. yeah. So people have to remember that it's not like 1988 where the whole thing built down the sun. 1998, yeah. 1998 where the whole thing built down the sun. It's a different era, different things are going. On. You understand? Yeah. So we, we have to adjust ourselves and, and see the situation and say, the football are going to look like that. Because I remember back in my days when maybe a UBL or a Thomas McLean leave, Boy Stone, they still have the, the nucleus away. Where them, you understand? Everybody never leave at one time. You understand? Yeah. So, yeah. So. All right. I see, I see, I see, um, I see, I see some of my concerns spring. Folks never ask me how they comment, but I'm going to check. I'm going to adjust side. So if you're still on, I'm going to come back up to it. Um, I'm going to come back up to this comment. They're asking, um, um, this is um cute young sir. How the best schoolboy team for stop in the 80s, um, yet still at the 90s make you go youth world cup. Um and sing like like they said, you know, they, they will tell you that in that time there wasn't a lot of opportunities to do that because they weren't playing. Uh, um, enough of that kind of football back in the days to really qualify for even for youth World Cups. It was call ups every now and then. And I remember yesterday, um, then then Hutchinson was even saying that there was a time when they would play one game now and then the next six months after that they play a next game. So there was no consistent um, playing a game for national teams. But this 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 um this comment is saying. Um, let me just let me just get it again and just read it for it says, How do we um what happened to the Charlie Simit 95 team with Pele, Ching Su, um, and Bunze them? I, I, I listen, uh, when people talk, I, I can say when people talk about some of the best schoolboy teams, they talk about that KC team with Jumpy Harris, the Clarendon College team with Lenworth Teacher Hyde. Those are the two teams I always hear people speak about. We are the Charlie Simit team, which was a good team. We're the Charlie Simit team. Maybe we need to we need to discuss that with some players from that era. In that era, because every time I hear about good schoolboy team, um, you know, those are the two teams that people predominantly talk about. They, they, they talk about the that KC team and that Clarendon College team that they said looked like the national team as to how good they were. And you just brought up a Camperdown team in the mix right now maybe there's a place for us to discuss that charlie simi team but i i always hear that those two teams back in the days were the two biggest schoolboy teams in terms of how they play the football but um yeah um we need to we need to hear some more about how the charlie simi team would match up with 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 with, with those teams because a lot of those charlie simi players i think kevin pella wilson probably and, and, and to a an lesser extent, Colonel Chingsu was the two who were normally in the national team. And they didn't even have great national team careers when, it, when you really check it, compared to some of the players on that KC team back in the day and some of the players that were on that Clarendon College team back in the day as well. So, But a good discussion to have had or to have because I'll tell you this. People will tell you about the Rossi's team with Michael Grime right, and Lindo, right. right? People are going to tell you about some um you, you know just just the jc team that was dominant um recently so people will always bring up teams but what i know is that here, here somebody lied up on a saying there's a 74 jc team a 76 people people a 71 have, old man's team yeah you, you know you see what will happen everybody is going to have a team in an era yeah because everybody are, is a preference thing you know yeah yeah so yeah yeah um, and, and this was relating to what we were saying earlier. I don't. I didn't say that there was an emergency meeting. Um, management, why do you think there was an emergency meeting before the game? I, 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 I don't recall saying that there was. Um, so um, I, I don't know that there was an emergency meeting before the Panama game. I don't know that. So I, I would not have said that. So I'm not sure if that is the question um, that you're trying to find out. But yeah, but I mean, you know, yeah, I like what you said about the team and the coach needing to take charge. And you're just you're you're talking about you have to be honest to tell your friend the truth. You know, you have to tell your friend the truth and think. So, what is that truth that you need? You believe needs to be to be shared right now. The truth is, 
we're, we're, we have to hold the coach accountable for where we are now in the World Cup. When I come to America, I understand in any sport, it's never the player fault. It's always the coach. And if we're not performing or getting the result, all hands are for point at the coach. And the coach knows the situation and he must get him, get him out in order. Or he must do it. Yeah. He must just top off of us, coach the way he knows for coach and, and take up this fear all the time. For me, I see fear in a tapper. Tapper not coaching the way oh, he knows how to coach. He's afraid to make the decision. He's afraid what people in the stand are going to say. He's afraid where, where the media, where the public are going to say. And I think that is one of the biggest problems with Tapa. Yeah. 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 Tapa would be here and he's thinking about the game, watching the game, but he's not sending his information, what he see on the, on the, on the player game. He's not doing that. He's not involved in the game. Maybe the last two games, he's on the cycle track now, but before he was just there thinking. Sometimes you're there thinking, but what you're thinking about, you have to send that information out to the skipper and to the vice skipper, what we're doing from what we're not doing. Man is man, oh, in this day and time, in 2021, Jamaica don't have a, 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 a forward coach. How come Paul Tiga Davis and, and Michael Tuller not part of the forward um, show people for score goal or do things at center forward? How come they not have a Lenny I? Or a Paul Young, or the coach with more himself in a midfield. Who is the defensive coach? But, but what they're going to say to you is that they can't afford so many coaches. So, so, so we have to tear it down, then, man. So it's up to we then. If them cannot afford it, people like you, man's man, in the diaspora, where we can put dollar to get dollar and keep for money and whatever them need on our umbrella. We give them what they want. If they must forget other coaches, we can't be able for people. We can't sit down no more enough, man is man, and watch and see what are going on with Jamaica football. You know? A boogie yaga thing are going on with Jamaica football. You know? Not in this day and time. No one man, no two man run, no farmer sports. I was watching Brazil one year playing a game. It's, it, it was a practice game many years ago. And I see a guy get up off of the bench. And he come and whisper something in the coach. And when he whisper something in the coach, he go back. And all of a sudden, just say the coach comes up to the player. That man is on the bench for some reason. He's there to spot and see something where the coach don't see. So in, after 1998, man is man. Why we allow our football to go back where? People saying, oh, what we never do in the 60s and 70s and 80s. People know what tech plays in the 60s and 70s and 80s. It's, it's corrugated box. We have to eat out of our national stadium. <laughs> me never get a dollar yet play for the national stadium. The only national time we get money is when, we go, is when we go overseas and then give a $10 a day or whatever for pocket money. You understand? So... None of us come into this world all at once. We have people who have to set the foundation. People just come at the right time. Things just happen at the right time. Everything not happen one time in life. That's why I love my elders so much. I love Les Brown so much and Johnny Cole and Archie Reed and Desmond Smith and Romito Hill and De Dennis and Devon Lewis and Hugh Bailey and Lasha and... The Lenny Eyed and the Boom Eyed and the Mary Cyrus and so on and on. You understand? God, they set the foundation. They set the foundation. Somebody has to set it. Me cannot complain, man in man. A Les Brown and other guys before me must complain because me say what they have to do without no food in other system, but because of the love of the game. So don't tell me what we never do. We, me, play for the national side for about five years. You can't count about 15 games a good player plus international game. In the 90s, how much, how much game man have? How much cap tapper have? How much cap the other man them have? 
50 yards, 60 yards, practice match. So how oh, you have a compare we if you get better or could I do something with that? Out of peer talent, no money, same way in the organization, a boogie yaga business. Eh? Yeah. No, man, we, have, we have to split justice, man. You have to yeah. split justice. It was yeah. unfair for us. Yeah. Yeah. Did they know that I think in 1974 Jamaica missed the World Cup by one point? I think Mexico beat Jamaica 2 1. Yeah. yeah by that, one point. And never are, make it to the World Cup. Yeah, that was the closest we have been. That is the closest. Outside of the 1998 qualification. Yeah. We were missed out to Mexico in 74. Yeah. And that team was under prepare, under coach, everything was. Under everything. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah under yeah. everything. You don't get called up to Jamaica have a one little game for play. And after you play it, you go back home. It may yeah, be a yeah. double head or whatever. Yeah. And like, after then they're not said it. Then they don't say that team play one game now and six months after and play a next game for the national team. And me play off uh, then, then. And me, I tell you, say it was the same system all in my time. And me go on a five, six coach for the national side. Yeah. All right, oh, we know we're gonna oh and half, so we're gonna take some of the comments and then because beautiful man, we could go to all tomorrow in a month. Man. <laughs> <I don't know. laughs> we have, you know, we have a lot of these to do to do part two. But um, um, Carl Carl Rose says I've been watching schoolboy football at all levels, and he says from the late seventies, and I can tell you that ninety five Charlie Simmons team was not normal. And then Brown <laughs> Brownman Security thirty thirty three good son said Viertech two Mannings with Stylo Stylo Banks and Andrew Andrew Andrew. Andrew Andrews, um, Marvin, um, Carl, Carl Wilson just reminded us that Kevin Peller Willis and Carnell Chingsu just missed out on World Cup places. Um, then Lloyd Connor is saying that there was a 74 JC team with Martin Woodstock, Jimmy Sinclair, Luke Schenk, Whitney, Norman Pennycook, and, and Stephen Bond, etc. Then, then Carl Rose said that the core of that Charlie Smith team went to win about two national titles. Then he says, um, the Hardware Brothers and the ZDs, big up color red, so they sound like a boy stone fan right here. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and then um Lloyd Akana says, Mr. Dono, how can you call names and leave out Derek Denniser, your your bro Diego Gardner and Alim? He did call all of those names, man. Maybe a giant lady, but he called all of those names and, and talked to us about how good Diego was, and he couldn't get into the boy stone team as a forward because Ali mm -hmm. McNabb was a center forward. But listen, I want to I, thank I, you. I, you know, Wise, man. As as the caller um, comment on that, my uncle Herbert Diego Garden, he, he wasn't even somebody um, where in you know, my top five of boys town, you know. Cause me always look for the the warrior them. Not that he was the man, you know what I mean? Yeah. But my my player them are the are the one them where dot up them gears and. So, and, so who are your top five boys town players of all time? No, man is man, man is man, you have set me up, man. No, you just said, you said that you don't have him in, have him in your top five. Yeah, so but me not, me can't call a name, man, because every, every man and woman who pass through that institution, whether cricket or football, me salute to them. All right, all right. You understand, because me not want to leave out nobody, man is man. It, so it, let, me give, let me give you some names that you tell me what you think. Um, Carl Brown. Get a top a number a number one that man. <laughs> All right, so call road. Um, 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 let me teach a hide. I I match on that man. I want to tell you so when 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 the teacher come a boy stone, we have a, a spectators by the name of Irvin Powell, aka man like dirt. Him say if Lenny are the teacher, then Diego are the principal. <laughs> so Diego, <laughs> so Diego God have to be there. Yeah. Uh, all no, right. I, I, they got nothing. They, and man, in my, you make people beat me down a boy's town, you know. <laughs> Our people who used to watch the game because my uncle, him never easy, you know. But at the Les Brown, at the Archery, at the Derek Dennis, at the Carl Brown, at the Light Respect Morgan, at the Tutter Branch, you understand? In my time, at the U Bailey, at the Thomas McLean, at the you know them type so of players. Oh, you know to call Ali. Oh, you know call Ali McNabb. Well, <laughs> Ali, 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 Ali said Carl Brown don't bring my boy Stone to running. It's a score goal. <laughs> wait, 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 say that again. Say that again. 
<laughs> All the work now, sir, Carl Brown, don't bring my boy sound to run up and down. It's a score goal. That is theme job. And him do oh. it beautiful. Just to get the ball and kick shot. Yeah, just, just kick the ball, the ball and in net. And he would come <laughs> when training not go on all 2 o'clock, you know, and get the reserve goalie and kick pay ball till evening to him, you know. Okay. It was theme thing. Ali Matnam is the greatest two-foot kicker I ever see play the game named football. Okay. They always I'm talk about, about Andrew Andrews. I'm not talking about well. accuracy. Me never yeah. really say Andrew Andrews. Yeah. But me not talking about with my eyes, say. Yeah. Ali Matnam. I'm not talking about accuracy. Me I tell you about it you now. The next person was Hector Wright. I never knew Hector Wright was a, a right footer until I listened to the interview. All this time, I think Eki was a left footer, you know. Yeah, yeah, is it? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right, see, 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 Ryan LFC saying you need to come back to Jamaica. Boy, still need, need help, Joe. <laughs> yeah, boy, still need help, but guess what? Jamaica is not where it used to be in a man's man. You can go back home in your own community and people who you born and grow with would have sell you out or run you out because somebody else done there and give them a thousand dollars. Is no loyalty is not there anymore. People like me who born and grow in a boy's town, me not saying a boy, me not talking a boy's town. I go down a boy's town and I can't have people know even want me to talk to the players. That's how, that's how bad them community they becomes. People come into the community and take it away from, from who laid the foundation. Yeah. Oh, 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 that possible for happen. Yeah. I live in the state. I'm just going home to, to visit. And I cannot go home to visit unless I have to go to Boystown. Because Boystown, Boystown is my life. Boystown is everything to me. My permanent address, Mr. Manning, if you don't know, is 6 College Smith Drive, Kingston 12. Yeah. That institution of boy son, because I know where boy son have done for me and many others. You understand? But Jamaica is not what it used to be. If you have an idea and go back down to Jamaica now to try make something better, then I'm going to tell you, say, what you did the last 10 years or 20 years, and re, 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 you come to get out the money or you come to do this and do that. Yeah. Me, of all the person. But they are boy son from five years old. Me can't go in a boy son go say nothing. Yeah, you have a link. You have a link. You have a you have a link up, Ryan, man. <laughs> <laughs> and this, you know, this this person right here also work with the boy stone foundation, you know. Brian, you know. They call him mana steel. Some people call him mana sponge. Yeah. What, what is mana steel? So but, yeah, so he works down there with the with, with the but man is man. for them as well. <laughs> man is man, I want to let you know that I have a, a non-profit organization named Boys Talk, named Trenchtown Rock International. Yeah? Yeah, it's I saw over. you in the shirt. I saw you in the shirt. Yeah, already. it's a year old now. So you and need to show have... the people the shirt, man. Show people the... where the shirt. Show the people the shirt, man. Trench oh, you see? Rock. Yeah, man. So they can Bling see. it, Boys Town, man. Yeah, yeah. man. Trenchtown Rock International, man. We have... We depend on all social media, Facebook, WhatsApp. We have helped over 1,200 kids with meal last Christmas. We have helped 60 to 70 golden age um, old folks with, with food package. We have, we have a, um, a school program. We help yeah, out see, in the see, community. See the man, I say, yeah, man, great organization. We, we help out them. in the community and labor there. So we ask everyone because every street every district every community in jamaica is our own it's not where you just born is your community and if you can give a liquor no care how hungry is and you have a slice of bread and a man come beg your piece give it to him he may hungry than you yeah. so you can go on those social media and and see what we're doing for the last Trench year rock. yeah trench on rock international yeah, man. So Carl Rose saying that Murray Cyrus is a part of that. Yeah, Murray Cyrus is a big part of it. You understand? So we, me, for me personally, man is man. I always want to give back to my community. Because I remember when I was like five, six years old, and I have to stand up in the line for Christmas dinner over Boys Town. It means a lot to me. And we yeah. must all, charity start at home for me. 
and we must always remember where we're coming from. Yeah, you understand? Man. Yeah. Yeah, people, this is the big bad. Well, where's the bad? You know, in Jamaica, you know, the big good. <laughs> let me say the big good Joe down over there in the Bronx. Still, he's still knock it, you know, them, them were coaching right now and them have the over. Yeah, man, we have, you know? have a, a soccer team for the last <laughs> yes. 20 years in Queens, Basel yeah, yeah. United in Queens. Heal up all of my friend and from Basel United. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. There you so go. I coach over 30, over 40, over 50. Me always stay in touch it, it with is football. It's it, it not that Queen's team played against um, the team from Brooklyn on Sunday. No, we no. play in the we used to play in the Long Island League. The Long Island League. But most yeah. of my guys who I know play in that Brooklyn League. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Basel yeah. United. Yeah. Basel. So, you know, if you're over 40, you go over there, you know who to link up if you want yeah, to play man. some ball. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, so, sir, I want to thank you. You understand me? This is this was an awesome, awesome interview. I am glad also that you ended on, on the note you ended, which is, you know, just not talking about Boystone, but giving back to that community, having spent so many years there. And this is the kind of thing that we want. We like the ideas about transforming the football and, you know, even concerning the national program where you're suggesting that the coach need to take charge of his team and the players need to come together and the leadership, the JFF, has a responsibility of putting things into place so that the coach can get the right equipment to fix the car. Coach can need a spanner and you give him a screwdriver. You yeah. understand me? So we want to thank you. We want to thank you. I mean, because there are many overseas who don't look back to Jamaica and here yeah. you are, you are doing that. And yeah. um, so, so um, on behalf of the people of Boystown, Rima, um, yeah. Trenchtown, the whole Colosimit Drive, all of those places, big up to you. The entire Jamaica says that the I am sure sports family, big up to you. And this, well, you know I, that you know how to call me. You know, say anytime I you want to come need, on. I still need even two or three minutes if yeah, I man. I'm Go able ahead, to man. say what I want to say, Go uh, ahead, Mr. Manning. Yeah, um, I want to talk to the the youth from the, the community of Rima and Trenchtown, Demon Town and Tivoli and Jungra and wherever this crime and violence is going on. I ask you to make the peace work, make the peace happen. I know it will not be easy for peace to happen because a lot of you have lost loved ones, brothers and sisters, mothers and fathers. But if you cannot do it for yourself, please, I'm asking you, do it for your little boy and your little girl. Do it for your family. Give peace a chance. Give, give the youth of your community, the children, a chance to develop. I'm asking you, just look into yourself this evening or tonight and look at your little daughter and look at your little son. If you cannot do it for yourself, if you don't want peace for yourself, please do it for them. Okay, I'm, I'm asking you and I'm begging you Give peace a chance. Give the youth of Trenchstone, Rima, or wherever community in Jamaica, give them a chance. Stop the foolish war and killing and crime. It don't make no sense. It don't make no sense. Every bad man before you guys, them good pass and gone already. It don't make no sense. A better, a better community make a better Jamaica. So it have to start with the community first. We have to have people who come out and organize and mobilize and, and, and don't be afraid to, to speak to these people and tell these people what kind of community you really want or need it. And man's man, did you know that the, the man who wrote our national anthem, the pledge and sure. the national anthem, yeah, is our founder of Boyston, Boyston. Father Sherlock. Yes. Yeah, man. Okay. Is, they, right, don't have, so. they don't have a building down your name off. They didn't name the yeah the, the building. building is, yeah, the building is for your Sherlock business. Building. And there is a there is a school beside Boystown named um you Sherlock, Sherlock. um yeah. school. Don't worry, yeah. man. We know down there very well enough. You okay. know, we traverse awesome. the place. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so there you go, people. What else can I say? Um, like you said, Carl Rose said it. Well said. You understand me? I'm glad that again you ended on that note. Um, please check out Trenchstone Rock. That is the, the foundation. Trenchstone Rock International. International. They are the organization that pours back into the communities down there. You understand me? In 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 in, in Kingston 12. You understand me? Not just not just not just over the Rima side and right. Trenchstone, but everywhere. It comes right. everywhere down there. It's right. open for everyone to be a part of it. And this is the yeah. kind of upward mobility 
that we want. Again, I want to yeah. thank all of you who participated in this discussion. Right. Yeah. Um, 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 hear somebody saying that the building, the usual, sir, is, it is being um, refurbished as we speak. Right. Um, like I said, Brian might he, might he works down there and is a is a major major part of what is happening in down there. So he may know you. I don't know, but you guys need to be in touch because yeah, yes, 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 yes. So we I, 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 man, man, you can't give anybody Joe down a number, you know. Yeah, man. So anybody. Yeah. Joe yeah. Dona have that number for many years. Joe Dona not hiding from anybody. If they need to contact me, you can reach me at that number. Yeah, man. And that is okay. so true, people. Very easy to talk to. Nice family and his wife and things. So, yeah, man. So, bless us. Thank you so, so much again for coming on. Thanks to your wife for helping you. Tell her I thank said big you, thank you. Thank you, man, <laughs> man for, give, to, for give me this platform to allow me to, to say what I have to say from the top of my heart. And you know, we only can hear to agree and disagree, you know what I mean? So yeah, seven yeah. brothers, seven different mind. You know, we just we just have to just talk it like it is. Yeah, you man. know what I mean? Brian is saying you need to ask Chulu about him. Yeah, man. Okay, Ch okay. Chuli, Chuli or Chuli. Chuli. Brian, what's his name? They call him Mana Steel. Some people call him Mana Sponge. But, <laughs> 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 but Brian, Brian might uh, yeah man. Uh, yeah, 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 man. All right, so people, bless up. See, see have your, your base of United baller, Kirk Francis, bl blessing you up as well. So, there you go. Uh, Mrs. Donna, again, thank you so so much as well for allowing your husband to spend um, this amount of time away from you to, to, to talk to us. Yes, er Ernel Spence, he is the Joe Donna from Veertech, indeed, he is. Yeah, yes, man. yes, so bless up. Again, people, thank you. Please do not leave without liking the video. We want to show honor to these um, legends of the game in Jamaica. We can't have these videos. I have like a hundred, uh, like 50 and 60. No, we have to have about 100 likes. Um, yeah, man, for this. Dean Sewell. Dean, big up yourself. Um, this is a big Dean Sewell over there as well. He was on the show as well. I'm a general, yes. that man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. The, the whole New York watching. You understand? Yeah. Me? So we bless up. We bless up. Again, people, hit the like button. Again, we want to thank the sponsors for this video. Um, Tricknick. Uh, Tricknick is a Jamaican-owned and operated company in Canada. And they, they, they sell all you need to, to have the best jerk. Right, jerk chicken, jerk pork, jerk fish, whatever you want to jerk. They have jerk seasoning, they have jerk uh, spices and space, barbecue sauce, and they use just ground provision, spices and herbs from Jamaica to make all their products. And if you go to www.tricknick.ca, you get 25% discount on all their products, right? And they have a great, great shipping, they ship all across the world and they ship also in the united states right so if you do outside jerking inside no matter where you jerk this is top-notch stuff and if 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 it don't go so you know we are not going to say it again thanks to everyone for joining for being a part of this we're going to talk to you again you know because you know uh we, we have to talk again well, I mean, I mean, you know ask me if i'm me and me, me or my uncle are the better ball I know. yeah yeah we all have that <laughs> <laughs> i didn't want to put you on the spot but we're going we go have to discuss with him who is better if he was better than diego or diego was better than him and so we need to have that discussion but again thank you one and all please hit the like button before you leave and, and again thank you mr donor all right, right. um we're gonna end with a word from our sponsors uh trick me catering 18 jamaican herbs and spices add delicious bold flavor to your next grilling experience flavoring sauce a marinade basting condiment or topping trick nick jerk barbecue sauce Jamaican herbs and spices add delicious, bold flavor to your next grilling experience. Flavoring sauce, a marinade, basting, condiment, or topping. Trick Nick Jerk Barbecue Sauce. Jerk Marinade. 
gives your meats and vegetables authentic Jamaican jerk flavor. The spices are directly from Jamaica. Spices like jerk seasoning, allspice, scotch bonnet pepper, fresh scallions, thyme, ginger, and garlic. The key ingredients to a great jerk marinade. 0% sugar and low in sodium. You want to try it?